Hello everyone, this is Professor Ng Chi Kun from Unimas. In this video, I'm going to give you a lecture on pre-stressed concrete technology, which is lecture number two, part one. Okay, so in this lecture, we are going to look at the types of pre-stressing tendon. So in the previous uh, lecture, we have already seen the types of uh, pre-stressing steel that is used. So we have bars, we have wires, we have also strains. So all these bars, wires and strains, they are formed into pre-stressing tendon. So a pre-stressing tendon may consist of a monostrain tendon a multiple strain tendon, a single bar tendon, and multi wire tendon. So we will look at each of four of these one by one. Eh? Okay. So what is a mono strain uh, tendon and single bar tendon, and what is multi wire tendon? Okay, and what is multi strain tendon? Are all illustrated in these four diagrams here. So uh, diagram number A shows a mono strain tendon. Okay, we have only one strain. So this uh, seven wire mono strain tendon is used as a pre-stressing tendon. Okay, and then B here we have multi-strain tendon. So multi-strain tendon meaning that we use multiple of this seven wire uh, strain. Okay, these are multiples of uh, seven wire mono strains. Huh? Okay, so they are formed into a tendon. Okay, they are bundled to get, together to form a tendon. And then this is the anchor block for multi-strain tendon. So we have many tendons going through the anchor blocks. So you need multiple locking devices okay so one for each tendon yeah? and then a single bar tendon will look like a normal reinforcement steel okay but this is made of a high strength high ductility steel different from uh, normal reinforcement and then we have a multi-wire tendon so multi-wire tendons is that we use multiple wires right, to form a tendon, right? So the end of the each of the wires are enlarged, okay? So that they form uh, button heads for anchorage purposes, right? And then you may have a threaded anchor head over here for locking in the multi-wire tendon anchor blocks. Huh? Okay, so these are the four possible types of uh, pre-stressing tendons that you may use in pre-stress concrete construction. So let's look at uh, in more detail of what is a multi-strain tendon. Yeah? So multi-strain tendon means that we have only one strain, right? So we have only one seven wire mono strain eh? okay so in this case we have only one seven wire strain and we have anchor blocks for it so you may see that this is a cross section of a seven wire strain okay and then this is the locking devices so this one is called the anchor block and then the locking devices that we use they are called the wedges eh? okay they are in they are made of high strength steel as well and then if you want to connect or join two tendons, okay, then we have another type of uh, anchorage devices that we can connect two, white, two mono strains together to form a continuous strain. And then uh, these are the pictures showing multiple strain tendon okay multiple strain meaning that we have many strains eh? more than one strains 
so this anchorage device can uh, accommodate five mono strains eh? okay so form multiple strain tendon and then this device can contain more seven wire strains right as well as for this and this one is similar to this eh? so we have a five anchorage blocks there that we can accommodate and anchor five of the seven wire strains so this is how they are placed in uh, pre-stressed concrete structures eh? so we have the metal sheathing and then this this uh, pre-stressing steel forming the tendons so each of these is considered a tendon eh? okay so a tendon is made up of uh, one uh, pre-stressing steel or more right so we can have one pre-stressing steel or 10 or 20 pre-stressing steel to form a tendon so each tendon in this case consists of uh, multiple strains eh? okay so this is how they are placed in the pre-stressed concrete structures right and then for a single bar tendon a single bar tendon as i mentioned just now it may look like a normal reinforcing steel but this steel is threaded eh? okay so this is how they are they may look when they are already cast in the concrete structures here so at the end here we have uh, nuts here for pre-stressing purposes eh? so if you tighten the nut at the same time you'll be tensioning the steel okay so this uh, type of uh, single bar tendon we do pre-stressing by tightening the nut eh? and then for multi-wire tendon so this type of pre-stressing tendon is not very popular in recent days and therefore its application is very limited eh? so the most common type of uh, pre-stressing tendon that we use today is multi-strain tendon okay even the uh, bars are not very common eh? so let us look at uh, what is the typical tendon force that we are looking at eh? okay so for one single strain or one seven wire strain we may be looking at the tendon force of about uh, less than 1000 kilonewton okay and then for a bars of uh, 51 mm of sorry not 51 mm 51 mm is supposed to be the passage way eh, for the bars so the bars is uh, 36 mm bar right so it's a uh, 3 over 8 inch eh? right so for this bar here we may be looking at the pre-stressing force of around 500 kilonewton okay if you use 85 wires then we may be looking at uh, close to 4000 kilonewton if we have 55 uh, seven wire strains then we may be looking at about 7000 kilonewton and then if you use 55 strains of a larger diameter okay so this is uh, multi-strain with uh, nominal size of 15.7 mm this is 12.9 mm this is a 15.7 mm a seven wire strain so we may be looking at about uh, pre-stressing force of 10,000 kilonewton so as you can see uh, the pre-stressing force is uh, very high uh, the value of the pre-stressing force uh, it may be uh, up to 10,000 kilonewton but normally pre-stressing force for uh, normal structures are just within this range here okay from about uh, 2000 to 7000 kilonewton right okay so for the pre-stressing tendons uh, if it's a post-tension 
steel. So post tension steel, we are tensioning the steel after we have cast the concrete. So that's why we have to put this uh, steel sheathing uh, or plastic sheaths uh, in the concrete structures during casting so that the steel inside won't be bonded by the concrete. Right? So we have to install this steel sheathing in the concrete structures as we can see in the previous illustration uh, over here. Okay? The steel sheathing is placed inside the mold and then the pre-stressing steel are placed. So this type, this uh, part of the pre-stressing steel, they don't have the steel sheathing because they're cast into the concrete as part of the anchorage. Okay? But this part of the steel will not be bonded to the concrete uh, except this part that is not protected by the steel sheathing. So this part will be bonded to the concrete to form the anchorage right and then the pre-stressing force is applied through the other end okay so it will be pulled from the other end eh? okay so to uh, apply the pre-stressing force onto these structures okay so these are the steel sheathing that we put into the the concrete mall right the concrete structures mall and then the processing steel are placed inside the steel sheathing so this is a plastic sheathing for mono strain okay so this is mainly used for uh, unbonded tendons eh? okay so for unbonded tendons we don't inject grouting but we put grease around the tendon so the tendon will be won't be bonded to the concrete but for steel sheathing, normally after you have cut, we have pre-stressed the steel, then we'll inject grout so that the grout will be bonded to the steel and then the steel will be bonded to the grout and then the grout is bonded to the steel sheathing and then the steel sheathing is bonded to the concrete. So indirectly, the steel is bonded to the concrete. So we call it a bonded tendon. Eh? So these types are norm normally the unbonded tendons right so the steel are not bonded to the concrete in the structure so this shows uh, how a bonded tendon and an unbonded tendon looks like eh, as i have explained just now so normally the steel the pre-stressing steel is inside the steel sheathing so after you have pre-stressed the steel then we'll inject grout so that the Pre-stressing steel will be bonded to the grout and the grout will, is bonded to the steel sheathing and then the steel sheathing is bonded to the concrete. So indirectly the steel is the pre-stressing steel eh, is bonded to the concrete outside. Okay, so this shows the unbonded tendon. So normally we have a plastic tube as we have seen uh, just now. Okay, we have plastic tubes or plastic uh, protection okay and then the pre-stressing steel is is inside this plastic tube and then after you have pre-stressed the after you have tensioned the steel then we may apply grease eh? okay this grease is uh, put into the plastic tube to protect this steel from corrosion eh? so in this way this steel is not bonded to the concrete okay so it's called an unbonded mono strain eh? or unbonded strain okay or unbonded tendon so it's a single strain uh, tendon eh? so we can call this just uh, strain or tendon okay it's a mono strain tendon made of one strain right so when we uh, tension the steel, then we need some means of anchorages. Eh? Okay, so to transfer the pre-stressing force, we need some anchorages at both ends of the structures. Okay, so for anchorages, they make use of uh, two principles. So one is by direct bearing, okay, and then the other one is by wedge and grip action. 
Alright. So what does uh, direct bearing anchorage look like? So it looks like this. Okay. So this demonstrates a single bar tendon with its uh, anchorage. Eh? Okay. So this is the part that we use to 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 be used eh, as the anchorage of the pre-stressing steel. Okay. So normally this is the pre-stressing steel or the pre-stressing bar that is put inside the structures, right? And then this is part this is the part of the anchor plates. Okay, so this is called an anchor plate, or this one is called an anchor plate also, but it's called a bell anchor, right? Because the shape looks like a bell, right? This one is a plate anchor because it's a steel plate like that, okay? So this type, the nuts is attached to the bell shape anchor, so this this one, the nut is, is a separate piece from the anchorage plate. So when the pre-stressing steel bar is put inside the concrete structures, whether it's pre-tension or post-tension, okay. So pre-tension, we tension the steel before casting. Post-tension, we tension the steel after casting of concrete. So this part is the anchorage plate that we utilize to rest the pre-stressing jack. Eh? Okay, so this part is the jack. So the jack will pull the bars. Okay, so this bar will be in tension and is pre-stressed. And after we pull the bar, this nut will be loosened. Okay, so once the, the nut is uh, pulled out together with the pre-stressing bars, eh? then this nut is locked tight again. Okay, so whenever you pull the bars with the jack, okay, you lock the nut at the same time. Okay, once the amount of pre-stressing is achieved, then we can lock the nut and then remove the jack. So this nut here and this uh, anchorage here, okay, will be resting on the concrete structure by the principle of bearing okay that's why it's called direct bearing because this plates or this bell bell shape uh, anchorage is resting on the concrete structures by bearing okay and then for the wedge and grip action we also have the anchor block but in this case we will be using some devices which we call wedges okay so these are the wedges made of uh, high strength steel also so these wedges will be placed into the hole okay will be placed into the the uh, grips okay so this this part is uh, showing how the uh, construction is done Okay, so this anchor block is placed inside the concrete structures. Alright, so this is here. Okay, so after that, we will place the grommet. Grommet is the, what you call? The formwork. Eh? Okay, the formwork for the wedges to go through. Eh? Okay, if you don't have these, then this part will be sealed off. Eh? We don't have a holes here to place the wedges inside the anchor plate here or the anchor block there. Okay, so once this is cast with concrete, then it will look like this. And then after that, we remove this uh, plastic former or we say that it's a uh, grommet. Okay, so once this is removed, then the hose is there. So once the hole is there, we can place these wedges in. Okay, so these wedges will be placed over here okay inside this anchor block here and then the pre-stressing steel is already placed inside uh, before before the concrete is cast is already been placed inside 
but it's inside a steel sheathing all right okay so this so that this steel sheathing is to protect this pre-stressing steel so that is it will not be bonded to the concrete eh? so that we can stress this steel after the concrete is hardened so once these uh, grips or wedges okay all these grippers or wedges has been placed inside here okay so once it's inside then we can put the hydraulic jack here okay and then we apply a tension onto the steel so we pull the steel so that the steel will be in tension once we have reached the desired pre-stressing force okay then we will try to knock these wedges uh, into place okay so these wedges will be gripping on the pre-stressing steel and then the side of the wedges will be resting on the side walls of this uh, hollow hole here this hole here so that the steel will be gripped by these wedges so the inside of these wedges are also uh, corrugated okay so they, are, they look like some uh, the uh, screw threads uh, or nut threads uh. again the threads in in a screw and nuts uh, bolt and nuts uh, okay so inside here is corrugated so it may be it will be uh, biting or gripping on the steel uh, okay so that the steel the steel is tensioned and it tends to go back to its original position uh, but it's prevented by these wedges and anchor blocks here okay so this is the anchorage that we say that is using wedge and grip action okay so we use the wedges to grip onto the pre-stressing steel uh, okay so once this is done then the jack will be removed and then grout will be injected into the uh, into this uh, steel sheathing eh? okay so that the uh, grout will grip onto the tendon and then the the grout will also be gripping on the steel sheathing the protecting steel sheathing and then the steel sheathing is bonded to the concrete so the steel is indirectly bonded to the concrete in this case eh? So this shows uh, the wedge and grip anchorage for multiple strains. Huh? Just now it's only for one single strain, huh? for mono strain, and then this is for multiple strains. Okay. So in this case, the steel sheathing is inside the concrete. Okay. So this part is the uh, end of the concrete structures. So these are all installed inside the molds huh? and then we will cast the concrete and then this is already cast inside the concrete. But uh, the steel is not bonded to the concrete huh? because of the steel sheathing here. Okay, so this end here, okay, we have a plastic cover during uh, concreting so that concrete won't uh, won't uh, disturb this part of the anchorage blocks huh? okay so once the concrete is hardened and is ready to be pre-stressed okay and the steel is ready to be tensioned then we place the hydraulic jack here so the hydraulic jack for this type is capable of pulling multiple strains huh? at once okay we are not pulling the one strain at a time huh? we're pulling all the strain together because uh, we have the hydraulic jacks that is able to do that okay so these are all patented systems huh? so if you want to use a fresinet system or you want to use a vsl system okay or you want to use a bbr system okay they all have their own type of jacks and their own type of anchorages right so this one if you put the jack here and then you pull the steel in tension okay then you need the wedges over here so the wedges is placed around the 
each of the strain eh, inside here. Okay, so you cannot see uh, very clearly, but it's the dark part here, right? So the dark part around the each of the strain are something like this, the wedges, right? So these are three piece wedges. Eh? Okay, it's made of three separate pieces, and then they are tied together with a rubber band. Okay, but these are high strength rubber band. Eh? Okay, so these wedges will be inserted. Okay, so once you pull the the pre-stressing steel, okay, the wedges will be following the steel to come out from the anchorage, and then we in inside the uh, jacks, eh, the jack has devices to push these wedges back into the anchor blocks. Okay, so this happens simultaneously. Eh? Once the steel is being pulled and the wedges is trying to follow the steel to come out, there is devices. There's a device that will push this wedge back into the anchor block. Okay. So once we have already tensioned the steel to the desired uh, precessing force, and then the wedges will be securing the steel in place eh, by the action of the action of gripping it, right? So inside these uh, wedges here is all corrugated. Eh? Okay, so you have the something like a threads eh, inside there to grip onto the steel. Right. So this is by using wedge and grip action as well. So these are the two types of uh, anchorages. Eh? One is by direct bearing, and then this one is by wedge and grip action. And then, the, other than the the ends or by bearing or by edge and grip action, so those are the part that we want to jack the pre-stressing steel. Eh? So, in this uh, in this end here, these are the end that we want to put the jack and pull the steel in tension, right? So. What about the other end? So at the other end, if you don't need to pull the steel or you need, don't need to jack the pre-stressing steel at the other end, okay, same as for this one, we have the other end, isn't it? We have the other end of the pre-stressing steel. So if you do not need to jack the steel on the other end, depending on the design, eh? okay, if in the design you don't need to jack the steel on the other end, then the other end of the anchorages, we don't need to have a device that you can install the hydraulic jacks. Huh? Okay, so we only need to jack the steel on one side, and then the other side of anchorage, we may make make use of uh, dead end anchorages. Okay, so dead end anchorages they are used for post tension tendon when tendons are jacked from only one end. Okay. So this is the dead end anchorages by uh, Fresinet. Eh? Okay, so these are multiple strain tendon. So this is the multiple strain tendon. So the tendon is jacked from the other side. Eh? So the other side will look like the other side will look like this. Eh? Okay, and then the the dead end side will look like this okay if you are using fresnet system eh? so this part of the steel they don't have the plus they don't have the plastic or steel sheathing to protect it so when you cast concrete this part of the steel will be bonded by the concrete okay so the concrete will provide the anchorage right when the concrete is hardened, the concrete will be bonded to this part of the steel, pre-stressing steel. But the pre-stressing steel inside this uh, steel or plastic sheathing, they are still, they still can move. Huh? Okay, they are not bonded to the concrete. So that when the concrete is hardened and this steel is ready to be pre-stressed, then the steel will be tensioned on the other end of the structures. Okay, so this steel will be so when 
the steel is pulled from the other side this part of the steel will move uh, because it has already been anchored by the concrete bonding right and then if you are using a single bar tendon okay so single bar tendon normally the dead end anchorage is the same as the end that you pull the concrete okay except that this part is cast inside the concrete so you don't have any place to put the uh, pre-stressing jack eh, in this case so this whole part is cast in the concrete so you pull from the other side you pull from the other side eh, from this side okay something like that okay so for bar like this you pull from the side where you have access to the bell and plate anchorage eh? and then for the other side this side is cast in the concrete right and then as i mentioned this uh, multi multiple wire tendon is not very popular already okay but if you have used it then this is the dead end anchorage that we may use okay so at the end of each uh, wire we put a plate huh? we put a plate to each wire so that this part will be cast in the concrete okay and then once the concrete is hardened this tendon will, will be pulled will be jacked huh? from the other the other side of the beam huh? so if this is the beam then one end you have that anchorages and then the pre-stressing operation side is on the other end of the beam right and then you are using vsl system this is the vsl uh, dead end anchorage okay so this one is by opening up the seven wire strain eh? because each of this strain is made of seven wires spun in a helical form so you uh, you just open up the end and then push it back so this part will bulge out it will form something like a tentacles of uh, of a jellyfish eh? okay or tentacles of cuttlefish right so in this case this part is will be cast inside the concrete as well and then once it's ready to be pre-stressed then the tendon will be jacked from the other side of the structures okay so these are the types of dead end anchorages that we may use in a pre-stressed concrete system so these are the photos showing different types of uh, dead end anchorages huh? so these are the ends where they will be cast inside the concrete okay before you tension the steel right so this will form the anchorage for this uh, pre-stressing steel at this end and then the pre-stressing operation is done on the other end okay with uh, end bearing or wedge and grip action okay so that's all for uh, this lecture here so uh, we'll see you in the next part of uh, lecture two huh? okay so thank you very much for watching